Money market funds were at one time considered an unpopular and somewhat feared place to park your cash. But given the recent string of bank failures across the United States, that sentiment has all changed. And while some people are now saying the worst is behind us, recent fund flows would suggest the opposite. Deposits are fleeing US banks and are flooding into money market funds. And I'm going to show you why number one one, this is putting banks at risk of further failures. Number two, this is putting the stock market at risk of an upcoming crash. And third, we're going to look at today's sponsor, Kalinex Mines, who if you remember, I spoke to you about them back in January, and since then, their share price is up about 45%. Right now, money market funds are absolutely crushing it, and they are drawing in billions of dollars quickly. In fact, in just four weeks preceding April 5th, money market funds attracted $350 billion. This pushed assets in money markets to a record 5.25 trillion. To understand why, it's important to understand that a money market fund is not just cash, like you have cash in a bank account. A money market fund is a fund, meaning they take your cash and they invest it in something to give you a return. Just like a mutual fund usually takes your dollars and invests your dollars in stocks. A money market fund invests your money in things like government bonds, treasuries, and sometimes corporate debt. Now, money market funds are specifically designed to be more liquid. It's a place where investors can park their cash while they don't need it right now, but they may need to access it at some point in the future. These are not considered long-term investments like normal bond funds sometimes are and stock funds sometimes are where you put your money in and you say, I'm just gonna keep on throwing money into this index for the next five, 10, 20 years and hope it compounds over time. Time. Money market funds are designed for short-term liquidity needs. Because of this, they are invested in more liquid instruments. So they do hold cash. Sometimes they invest some of their money in CDs. Usually a lot of them have a lot of treasuries and they also have corporate debt sometimes as well. Now you might be asking the question, well, how in the world is that different than what a bank does with your money? Because you know, when you put a dollar in the bank account, it doesn't just sit there. The bank takes your dollars and they send them out, invest it into assets, and they pay you some of the return. And you're exactly right, but there is a difference in terms of duration and then how much of that return gets passed back on to you. Over the past 20 years, money market funds move relatively quickly. 88% of the changes from the central bank pass through to the money market fund holders, whereas only 26% for rates on retail cash deposits get passed through. You can see this when you look at the interest rates getting paid at major banks like Chase right now, which is either nothing or 0.01%. In contrast, when you look at money market funds, like some of these money market funds from Schwab, they're paying upwards of 4.5%. So how in the world are money market funds able to pivot so quickly off of these higher rates when some of the large banks are still offering 0.01% or even nothing? Part of the problem comes down to the duration that these banks invested in. If you were a bank over the last couple of years, then the treasuries that were available to you were at rock bottom interest rates. And so if you took depositors money and you invested in a two year government bond back in May of 2021, you were investing and getting about 0.15%. Now, after you look at all of the bank's massive expenses, there really is nothing left to pass on to your average checking account holder. And that's still the case today because they took that money less than two years ago and invested it in something that wouldn't mature for two years. But money market funds, because they're designed for much more short-term liquidity and for giving investors a place to park their cash while they don't need it yet, they invest in much shorter term maturities. And so over the last couple of years, as interest rates on short-term debt have risen, the debt that money market funds hold has been able to get rolled over and they're able to pass on a much more attractive rate to the holders. It's important to recognize here that all money market funds are not created equal. And that's why we are also at the same time seeing outflows of specific money market funds into other money market funds. This is where the confusion comes in with news like clients pulling billions of dollars out from Schwab's money market funds. While at the same time, Schwab stating they actually have been attracting net 
billions of dollars in new client assets. Essentially, just like the big banks, money is leaving small banks, leaving more risky money market funds that invest in corporate debt and going into the safer money market funds that invest in treasury debt. So we're seeing three forces at work right now. The first force we see at work is that money market funds are offering a better yield. And so for anybody who has cash that doesn't need to use it immediately, they are seeing this better yield as a way to just at least not lose so much to inflation. Number two, many investors and savers are looking at money market funds and seeing, hey, this is actually safer than the banks because if the bank needs to meet redemptions right now, they have a lot of bonds they bought from two years ago, three years ago, maybe more that are underwater right now. Whereas a lot of these money market funds have debt that they've only bought within the last couple of months, couple of quarters. And so if they need to sell that debt right now, well, interest rates haven't increased in that amount of time. So they're not underwater on their investments. And number three, this is the big one. They're considered right now more and more a better risk adjusted return than stocks. So why does this pose a risk for stocks? Well, ask yourself this question. If you could expect a three or a 4% return from your stocks in the next five years, would you keep your money in those stocks or would you sell it and move it to a government money market fund that's paying three or 4%. And given what investors can know about future cash flows of stocks and their current prices, this would mean that prices of stocks would have to fall significantly before you could expect that future value to be worth it in the present. Basically what I'm saying here is that the stock market is currently priced for the risk-free interest rate to drop down soon. And if it doesn't, and it stays at three or 4%, then stocks will start to drop from here as they are repriced to account for the higher risk-free rate. Because you as an investor would demand a higher return if you're taking on additional risk. So stocks would then fall as people sell them, understanding that higher amount of risk right now is not worth it considering the fact that I could get 4% for taking no risk. This is why it's so important to do your due diligence. Instead of doing what 99% of investors do, which is just throwing dollars at an index and hoping it'll turn out okay in 25 years, you have to do what the ancient proverb says and look well into your investments. You have to make sure that you are buying value so that you are as reasonably certain as possible that how much you are paying for that asset is lower than what you think that asset is actually worth which is where today's sponsor comes in, Kalinex Mines, symbol C-L-L-X-F. Now, if you remember, I have talked to you about this company before, back on January 22nd of this year. At that time, Kalinex Mines was trading at $2 per share. Since then, they have risen about 45% to $2.90 per share. But the story of this company and the value that they are unlocking starts way before January of this year. We need to go back about 100 years to a little mining town called Flin Flon and a mine called the 777 Mine. This mine in the Flin Flon district in Canada has been in production for basically a century straight. Now this small mining town has about 5,000 people in it and every single person there is employed either directly or indirectly because of mining. And it's all centered around this 777 mine. Over the years, you've had some recent major discoveries from famous geologists like James Pickle and Mike Musilowski. But unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And in May of 2022, the 777 mine was shut down for good. It had been completely depleted. Now, this is bad news for a couple of reasons. Number one, like I mentioned, this small mining town, Flin Flon, everybody there is employed directly or indirectly because of this mine. So with this mine shutting down, many jobs and livelihoods are at risk. Number two, the company that owned the 777 mine, Hud Bay, is at risk of having to pay hundreds of millions of dollars in reclamation. When you shut down a mine, it's very expensive. And this is where Kalinex comes in. With Kalinex Mines able to bring a new mine online in Flin Flon, that would save thousands of jobs. Not only that, but Hud Bay would not have to pay the hundreds of millions of dollars in reclamation fees for this decommissioned mine. Suffice it to say there's significant interest in 
Kalinex succeeding here. And Kalinex has multiple projects right next to the old 777 mine. And they continue to see great drilling results. So how is this possible when you are right next to something that has been producing for 100 years? Well, it's because of who is on board. If you remember those names I mentioned earlier, James Pickle and Mike Musilowski, these are famous geologists who are award-winning geologists and Kalinex was able to bring them on board. So it's no accident, this is repeat success from a team with a track record. And it's not just the geologists either. Projects and companies like this require funding in order to be able to get started. So it's always important to see who is heavily invested and who has skin in the game. Kalinex Mines, symbol C-L-L-X-F, has over 50% ownership from institutions and insiders. Now I've met CEO Max Porterfield personally, and he has basically his entire net worth wrapped up in Kalinex. So we know the insiders are holding their shares close to their chest because they believe how big this company can be. But institutional ownership is important as well. And a company called Altius Minerals has invested heavily in Kalinex. Altius Minerals specifically has a track record of picking winners. This means that with the institutions who own Kalinex and the insiders who own Kalinex, there are very few shares available for others. So when news hits, this stock can move quick. And when we see over the last few years, every time they announce drill results, the shares can experience extreme volatility, even if the general trend is strongly up. Now I do own shares of Kalinex myself, and for stocks that can move quickly like this, I like to buy into weakness. I don't like to chase prices up. I like to leg into positions as there's a pullback in the price. Now we know that due to the banking fears, the higher interest rates, credit crunch is something that is on its way. Banks are getting tighter companies are getting squeezed. And for companies that are loaded up with debt, that means they are borrowing new debt in order to pay off old debt at higher interest rates. This is not a position you wanna be in as a company, which is why looking at the financials for a company is so important, especially with Kalinix having no debt. In today's environment, having a lot of debt can literally be a death sentence, especially for a small company. As creditors dry up, it becomes expensive or impossible to roll over your debt, and then your share price starts to fall, so you can't issue you new shares in order to raise money. So it can literally crush companies. That's why in today's environment, you wanna be so careful to be investing in companies with no debt that are cashed up and trending higher and producing results. Kalinex has project locations in some of the best jurisdictions with some of the best infrastructure on earth, boasting copper discoveries, gold discoveries, silver discoveries, lead, and zinc. With the trend towards deglobalization and new regulations demanding domestic and or Western production, Kalinex is well positioned for the times to come. With a compelling story and strong history behind them and a string of positive drilling results, it could be well worth your time to do your own research, look well into your investments and consider Kalinex. This is not advice, nor a recommendation, just the things that I do and I look for when I'm investing. And given the stress on banks with money flooding into money market funds and the stress that that could place on the stock market, I'm always on the lookout for ideas like this. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.